Got to swing by the Godox booth because there's always so much coming out from Godox. So I wrangled Lester over here because I need you to give me a walkthrough of some of this stuff, including this MS60 by Modular 60 watt system. And modular front and back. Yes, because on the back you have like different power solutions, battery pack, you can just slide it in. It's like rated for 100% 60 watts, 100% output like 70 minutes. Or an AC uh, modular, so yeah. it's not an adapter, it's meant to go with it, it's a closed system. But you also have like for no standard light bulbs. Yep. And on the front of course, different lens options, different light orientations, filters. Optical spot, I mean, are you gonna pop that off? Yeah, of course. So the center stays constant and you choose your power and your modifier by just popping in and out your different pieces that you got here. So folks, uh, we have a projection lens for 40 times magnification, like everything. And uh, they will be available in the kit, for example, and release at the end of the year. Yeah, so a nice 60 watt option for you out there, especially if you need something that's versatile on the fly and change for a scene, especially if you need practicals or something like that. Check out the MS60 by. I'm looking at the uh, RGB version, by color and the RGB version. What? Where's yeah. the RGB version? Oh, there's yeah, RGB. Yeah, there's RGB. What the color? Oh, well, there you go, guys. I just found out myself. What's this I'm looking at over your shoulder over here, though? We have a very big, strong new panel. It's the NOLED P1200R Hard Pro. So it's the, it's the most durable, newest light. It has 1200 watt output, like brighter than other lights available. Individual lenses on each diode over here? Yeah, of course. And you can put it in the rain and dust and wind. It will, um, yeah, stand the test of times. And of course, like all the protocols, uh, DMX, CRMX, Artnet, uh, everything is included. And of course, you have like a very modular uh, accessory system with diffusion, soft boxes. Yeah, all the usual stuff. But the real thing here is that it's rugged. The build quality is insane. Yeah. And then I'm looking over, like every time you turn around in the gauze, but there's something else. I'm looking at these three, like these looming lights over here. What's up with the COB lights? I mean, like every year we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> like last year we had the 2400 bicolor, but now we already have like a 2400 RGB version. Right. So you have all the color, all the tones, but also like if you're CCT, you have now magenta and green correction. So that's very cool. And it's the no LED line. So it's, it's aware of whatever you put in on there as a modifier. Yeah, if you take the modifier off, it automatically turns off. If you do the body cap on, it won't burn your lights. <laughs> That's nice. And for example, we have the beam light, the, the 90s, very big one. We have like also 100 RGB light right now, like a lot of exciting things. Yeah, and if you want to check out more about the beam light uh, Max 90, we actually covered that at NAB. You can check out the link below for the NAB coverage from this year. Always something going on with Godox, but if you're checking out small lights like the MS60 Bi to these monster lights like the MG2400 Bi or the R, you got links down below, check out all the specs. Last We've done time. everything. Oh yeah, well you keep <laughs> on coming out. It's like, what, what? It just it gets exhausting after a while, but very cool to have this many options, and especially within the same system, because you've got app control, you've got things that just go together, and you just know that you have a system that works. With the knowledge app, you can just control all the lights. All the lights. Yeah. Guys, links down below. Lester, thank you thank so you very much. much. Nice show. It's a trade show, that means we gotta go to Adamus. You go to Adamus, it means you gotta go to Jeremy. You go to Jeremy, you gotta talk about the things we just talked about NAB because they just got even better. <laughs> it's like deja vu, right? We talked about the Sun Dragon NAB, but now we've got a new version of a design and stay tuned because there's a big update to the Ninja phone that we heard about everything you said in the comments. Stay tuned. Let's talk with the Sun Dragon. What happened here? Okay, so diffusion added. Yep. So you go from 2000 lumens to 1500, you lose a bit, but you got diffusion. People wanted that for in-camera shots. Even though the non-diffused version, you don't see the LEDs when you're on camera, but no. people worry about it. It doesn't so. feel very point source, the regular one. This one though, it's it's flat. It's yeah. a different, it's a completely different design. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, we redesigned the whole thing. It's far more flexible, more robust. I mean, you can't crack it in half. Yeah, don't no, do that, yeah, right? Course. It's still a piece of B inside. It's flexible there. Um, but yeah, you can you can bend it right on itself, you know, like half an inch type of thing. Um, this looks more affordable. Waterproof. Too. Yeah, yeah. We we uh, finished off the controller because we just had kind of prototype version. Yes. Um, and and that's jam packed, right? Ethernet, RJ45, DMX in and out, power in and out. It got it's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's got CRMX in it. It's got. Um, the Ethernet supports Artnet, etc., etc., etc. All the connectability. All you the need. connectability, and it's still the same and waterproof. You, yep, still one meter to for an hour. Is that the controller as well? No, right? No, not yeah, the yeah, controller. Yeah, that's, that's the, <laughs> not the controller. Is, is that IP anything? No. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. I mean, it's 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 sealed and protected, right, right, but right. it's not it's not built for waterproof. You, 
you're not going to take it underwater. Yeah, no, I got right? you. I got you. Um, so that's the, the new Sun Dragon. So if you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I wanted the fuse version or something that's a little flatter in shape, you got you got it here. You can actually see the difference. If, if you were here in person, you would absolutely see the difference. But the Ninja Phone, there's been an update for it. Yeah, and this iPad, is iPad number one. One iPad, but the big, the, the other one, one, the other one is 4K. 4K. We saw those comments. Just at an upgrade. Yeah, it's just a firmware update for it. Right. So it's not like another model. It's not like if you bought the original and you go, oh man, it, no, it's just an update. So, first of all, was this always in the pipeline, yeah. or did you go like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. we heard you? No, no, no. <laughs> one, we want that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like we're sitting here going, oh yeah, that's good enough, guys. But. We didn't have the time. You know, I just came back to the company three months before NAB. Yep. I needed to show that we were still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So I lowered the bar for the team to get HD working on that. And they did. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, we put fast enough memory in, HDMI fast enough to be able to do 4K. At the same time, it was our first foray on the phone. We didn't know whether how the phone would perform, whether we'd have the bandwidth, whether or whether, whether we'd have the the heat dissipation, this kind of stuff. But we found that the phone performed amazingly. I know people are worried about it, right? They sit there, and, but I think a, a lot of people should try it rather than just assume. Well, even the yeah. phone itself was new. I mean, the yeah. 10 bits, all that, the USB-C, everything yeah, was exactly. new. And you already, boom, got something for it. Yeah. Yeah, and I was working on that before I came back to Atomos and um, because it is the future, right? It's 5G connected, it's Wi-Fi 6E, the new iPhone 16, boom, supported by Ninja Phone, day one. So when you say 4K, does that mean recording or streaming or both? All of it. All of it, that's so, cool. So you go 4K 30 DCI maximum. Okay. Right? Okay. You go straight to disc, it displays it, which is obviously on the XDR panel of the iPad or the and I love the 11 inch iPad personally, because it's like just that perfect size. You think of a camera there, you've got, you know, lots of real estate. Then it converts it to, the phone converts it to H.265 10 bit. Okay. Because we've put in ProRes already. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we stream it out to whatever you want in 4K 30 uh, or whatever you choose to stream it out in. Can, can you record ProRes and stream? Yeah. Okay. All so at the same time. All at the same time. It's and a monitor, recorder, streamer simultaneously. But then the other thing is that all the plat it's your choice of platform. It's not like you're stuck and then going to an API. You can you're doing whatever you want to platform. Correct. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you choose where to send that. Right. If it's a kind of um, tricky one or takes a lot of login or encrypted or whatever, then we've got our cloud studio which is free to log into. Okay. Right. So you just create an account and then you can point it to ten different locations at the same time. Right? To yeah. do it. But if you're just you just want to go Instagram directly, Frame.io directly, it does it from from the Ninja phone. As long as it's a supported protocol slash we've done the integration. Right. NDI is coming, SRT is coming, anything that you see on an Atomus product, we're just jamming it in. Yeah. As well as the camera controls on that have come to Shinobi, like the AF controls. Oh that's cool. Yeah. Okay. I think that's something we should definitely talk about. But, but Ninja Phone will get that as well. So Anything that you see pretty much on a minus, you know, 8K and on a Shogun, <laughs> right? Can't do that on the Ninja phone, but everything that you see in software, we're just porting it all across right now. And at the same time, we're working on Android in the background. Okay. But I want a 4K to be first, so through the engineers on the 4K rather than to finish the Android side. So those Android fans, you know, we are going to support you. You and green in messaging bubble people, yeah. we got you. <laughs> no, but it's really, it is innovative. I mean, think about it. You throw a phone on your, whatever camera you're using and you're beaming 4K and recording 4K. That's pretty awesome. In 10 bit HDR, right? I get it. Right. Every device, <laughs> every device has an HDR screen. I know. Right? Yeah. So why aren't we just shooting that? No, you're doing the full potential that you can get yeah. and you're doing the most convenient way, but Honestly, I think the message here is Atomus is supporting as best as they can. They're not asking you to buy another unit. They're just going, let's give yeah, it to thanks, them. Man. You know, so very cool stuff. Of course, links will be down below. If you were questioning the, the Ninja Phone before without the 4K, take another look. The firmware adds a lot. Bro, thank Cheers, you so man. much, Thanks man. a lot. Good, Good to see you. Got to swing by the Canon booth, right? And yeah, the C80 came out. We did a full video on that. You can check it out on the channel. And there's all these massive announcements, but the little announcements these love too. And I think they're more accessible to everybody. You're going to probably want to hear about this. We're talking about the RF28 to 70 2.8. This is a lightweight, very affordable 2.8 option for the R series. We're talking about an RF native mount, another lens option. Great. 
that's cool, but it's got 5.5 stops of stabilization, goes up to seven stops when you work in with the in-body stabilization on the RF series that has that available. But really what you're looking at here is just another option for you guys that's accessible and you're able to get a 2.8 lens. That means all that light collection, that means that shell depth of field, that means that you're able to get something on your camera that will give you a nice range of zoom from 20 to 70. It's of course external zoom, but 2.8 is the big thing and you get that custom control ring that you can program to whatever you like. So if you've been looking for an option for your RF mount, check out the 20 to 70 2.8. We'll put the links down below so you can check out the specs for yourself. Had to come by the OWC booth because you know, you've seen me using their cards, Joe McNally. They've helped sponsor our wedding hands-on workshop and they've been great. And I don't think a lot of you guys know exactly how deep OWC goes, but Larry over here has been talking my head off about this massive world of OWC memory. But one thing I really want to make sure we get to before we get to the craziness of your history is this Envoy Ultra. So this is an SSD that's already on Thunderbolt 5. What, what's the point of Thunderbolt 5 right now? More speed, faster <laughs> performance. <laughs> and it's great for, I mean, look, 40 gigabit is not gonna weigh anytime soon. I mean, that's an absolute fact. Thunderbolt 4 is gonna, we're gonna see that, even on new PCs coming out today, Thunderbolt 4 is still very standard. But for the future, Thunderbolt 5 provides up to double the performance of Thunderbolt 4. It's really, really fantastic. And these drives are backwards compatible. So if you're going between machines, if you're gonna be upgrading in the future, whatever it may be, this drive is ready for you now, and it's ready for you in the future as well. Well, we're not getting any easier on data, right? We're talking about 12K video hitting. We're seeing 17K video getting into consumer level hands. So we're just gonna need faster and faster data management, but what kind of capacity are we looking at on something like this? We're gonna start it up to four terabytes, and very soon, and hey, perhaps even by the time the four terabyte shipping, we'll be at eight terabytes. All in this very portable, ultra rugged, waterproof, dustproof, performance SSD that breaks 6,000 megs a second in real, real world performance. And that's important. I mean, we build products for the real world, not just for benchmarks, <laughs> to actually perform when you're out on the road, in your office, you know, at home, wherever you might be, this gives you sustained performance, not just a fancy benchmark. Yeah, the benchmarks look good too. But well, we've been using uh, your envoys in the field ourselves, and I'll tell you, they are crush proof. Trust me, they really are actually. But you're talking about benchmarks really quick. Weren't you telling me something about Apple using your, your SSDs as benchmarks? It's actually pretty, it's pretty cool. The, the, the M2 Ultra, Apple's ultimate Mac Pro system, if you go to, if you look at their system overview, you know, you don't take my word for it. You know, we're, footnote number 12, Apple actually used the Excelsior 8M2 to, just to demonstrate how much power, how much performance this machine has through its PCIe slots. So when you're buying the 8M2, you're buying something that literally maxes the performance that's capable in this machine. And any, actually any Mac or PC for that matter with high performance PCI Gen 4 uh, Express lanes. So I know some of you would think it's like a new company. I just saw OWC show up with these memory cards. They've been around for a very long time in the memory space. They've been doing massive systems. You don't even know some of the stuff that you've interacted with from like Amazon and other things that have been streamed through their systems. Check out OWC, we'll put the links down below. Express Type 4 has been huge for me as far as speed of editing, be able to read off a reader from the card, not filling up my SSD on my computer. I'm using the card natively to edit from. It's that fast. So that Envoy Ultra, Thunderbolt 5, I'll keep an eye on it, but I gotta get something that's Thunderbolt 5 first. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, there's only a couple of PCs in the world today that support Thunderbolt 5, but I think that's gonna change really quick as we get into Q4 and definitely into 2025. But hey, you, in any workflow, you buy what you need, you, you buy what makes sense for what you're doing. I mean, the latest and the greatest is, well, certainly when we're, we really operate on the forefront of all this technology. We've done this, we've been in this, this is our 36th year building technology solutions for well, all these needs. And yeah, we're looking forward to you know, continuing to lead the way and well, whatever your workflow is, we're here to maximize it and let this technology work for you. Not supposed to be the way, way around. Work on your creative projects, not on the technology you depend on. That's our job. That's a good philosophy to have. So check out the links down below for the receipt if you're not familiar with them. Larry, thank you so much, man. Yeah, pleasure, man. So I used my ginger telepathy here at IBC and it brought me to Sean over at Cream Source. And you hear Cream Source, you know a few things, right? One, it's gonna be well built, some really innovative ideas, great lighting. And the Vortex 8 has been out for a while. We're talking about zones on a panel, 20, tight 20 degrees um, beam angle, good throw. But then you said, no, no, we're not done there. We're gonna come out with the Vortex 8S, which is the soft version. So. Yeah. What happened here? <laughs> How did this come yeah, to be? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it, at first I was even myself kind of scratching my head because, you know, there's so many soft panels in the market yes. and, and some really great stuff. But um, 
for us, what we really wanted to do was, you know, we had customers who have been kind of asking us for this, uh, but we essentially just wanted to take our color science, our color engine, and really our Cream OS uh, firmware and the what, what we think is a nice user interface, and just adapt that to a soft light. So now you have, you know, it is just another soft light, but it's also a very bright soft light. It's, uh, you know, it's got it's got some punch to it itself, even though it has a much wider field of uh, uh, beam beam angle. Um, you can yeah. see the difference right there. Yeah, yeah. so you can kind of see, yeah, we have uh, different emitter sets, no no lenses on the new soft light, but this is truly, you know, it's a it's a very robust, uh-oh, uh <laughs> it's a very, very robust, uh, very robust soft light, so it's, it's definitely the most luminous of all of our lights. But as a really, as a solid brand, they don't leave you hanging with support, so there's actually firmware updates for the original Vortex 8 that gets you within the color science of the Vortex 8S, so you're updated. Yeah, yeah, so with, so the nice thing about the, the both the Vortex Softline and the Vortex Hard is that it's the same firmware, so you're uploading one firmware file, it covers all of the Vortex lights, whether it's the Vortex 4 Hard or the Vortex 8 Soft, and so with that, you get um, uh, not only multilingual support, uh, but you get the same color science, you get the same DMX profiles. So if you already have show files written, it's a one-to-one -one swap. Um, and with the new firmware, we also have a web server now. So you can discover all these fixtures on your network. Um, you can bulk update. Uh, you can uh, control them via the web server. Um, you can send firmware over DMX. So the, the new firmware update has added a lot of functionality, but you're going to get that across both. Um, one thing we did actually update on the Vortex Soft now is we have, uh, well, we have new lenses. So all of the lenses, all of the accessories work with the Vortex Hard, also with the Vortex Soft. Um, but on the Vortex Soft, we've added a new front-loading uh, mechanism for all of our uh, lenses and optics. Which um, is yeah. super nice. If you're going to do yokes like double up, quads, whatever, and you've been trying to slide out a lens or, or anything, you know what, how hard that gets. This lets it fall forward, so no matter how many you have, nothing's blocked. Right, right, nothing's blocked, especially you know for us with our new link system, um, where you can uh, create large arrays of Vortex, which works again with all the different Vortex products. Um, but with that, that in. with that system, uh, now you don't need to take the whole rig apart. You just need to pop it in the front. And that's it. And that's it, yeah. Yeah, because I know I, I've been there where you're trying to get this out, and then you got to pitch this to get that, and then you're, you're starting over again if you've had your light yeah. perfect. But really quickly to close this out, 20 degree beam angle yes. keeps it nice and hard and, and punchy. What do we got here as beam angle? Uh, this is 120, yeah. So Massive it's, difference. It's a much, much wider, much wider, like 110, 120. If you're trying um, to cover surface area, you're gonna want that, especially if you want that soft look anyway. Larger yes. light, softer light. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Cool, man. Well, we're gonna take a look at the rest of this going on here, but you can check the links down below for full specs. A lot of stuff happening at Cream Source. If you've never checked out the system, they thought of the whole system from end to end, so check it out. We're Thanks, trying. Sean. Of course, thank you so much, guys. Thank you.